Hello, welcome to the We've Been Drinking MMA podcast. We are talking about the Pavlovich versus Blades fight night. And the first fight on the card is Jeremiah Wells versus Matthew Semmelsberger. I'm going Jeremiah Wells. I'm going to go with a knockout in that fight as well. Um, Jeremiah Wells is a first round knockout artist. He's getting a little bit older at 36, but he... He really likes the bum rush in that first round. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Jer- I'm going with Jeremiah Wells as well. I-, I see Semmelsberger taking the center. Because of that, you know, Semmelsberger is going to be, um, you know, throwing more strikes. He throws leg kicks as well. When he throws a kick, sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's a little bit slower. And Wells does a great job countering leg kicks. Proof of that is uh, in his last fight with Court McGee. He actually knocked him out with a three-punch counter combination. Um... When uh, Court McGee landed the kick, I mean, saw that it was not going to be a strong kick and darted in and, and finished Court McGee in the in the first bad style matchup, in my opinion, for Semmelsberger. Semmelsberger pushes forward, has the more uh, striking volume. He's got 4.6 significant strikes per minute. Well, Jeremiah Wells only has 3.6. So Semmelsberger is going to throw more punches. Is that Semmelsberger, his head kind of pauses sometimes. And Wells is a guy who seizes the moment. He's that type of a guy, and that's why he's got five uh, finishes. He's on a five-fight finish streak. He's so fast at, at, at seeing a chance to counter. And and when Wells counter, he doesn't just sit back and counter with a three-punch combination. He'll see that your head is there, and he'll dart in with the counter. Forward. He's that confident in, in his reads. So, you know, going with Wells, um, I think um, another another good thing is, is that you can go Wells by KO, I might get a little bet on that and a, and then a normal size bet on the Wells outright. First round knockout. Thanks for listening, everybody. Welcome to the We've Been Drinking MMA uh, podcast. Uh, we are breaking down uh, fight UFC fight night, Blades versus Pavlovich. This is the second fight on the card. This is uh, Yasmin Lucindo versus Brogan Walker at 100 25 pounds going with uh yasmin lucindo for my prediction um but i mean she's minus 350 350 dollars to make 100 very expensive so i'll throw her on a parlay but uh the real bet i want to make as well um is just that this fight goes a distance you know all three rounds yeah going distance is my lock for this fight um yeah i mean the thing is is that i mean we both think yasmin lucindo is gonna win uh she's gonna win because brogan walker basically has pretty slow punches except for brogan walker's jab her jab is very she flicks it out there very confident with it and on top of that she's got a one inch reach advantage so what that means is is that when she flicks out that left hand that jab she'll be able to hit uh lucindo and or at least kind of keep lucindo off of her and lucindo is young she's 20 years old uh, and Lucindo does go forward, but not that much, actually. She'll throw combinations with some heat on it, but she doesn't press forward enough to pressure somebody. One of the reasons I think she lost her debut in the UFC, Lucindo, is, is that, you know, she she throws good combina- pretty good combinations, but she doesn't push forward enough. So it, it leaves that out for somebody else to go forward on her. And when, when, you, when you have a one-inch reach disadvantage and the other girl is a worse fighter, Brogan Walker is a worse striker, but Brogan Walker has that jab, it just means that you can get walked down just a little bit. And Lucindo should win two rounds easy. But still, with a jab, you know, that can connect here and there, and Lucindo doesn't push forward those combinations, it's kind of a recipe for going the distance. So pure striking affair. So 15-minute so 15, 15 fight, uh, going the distance, let's go. Welcome to We've Been Drinking in the Main Podcast. We are talking about the Pavlovich versus Blades um, card. And on this card is Bobby Green versus Jared the Flash Gordon. My prediction is Bobby Green via decision. Bobby Green is a volume striker. Hands by his, hands by his hips type fighter. Throw from the hip. <laughs> he has great uh, wrestling defense. I think it's going to be a stand-up type style fight. Um, I'm also uh, I'm also picking Bobby Green. Um, he's minus two fifty, two hundred fifty dollars to make a hundred. So you know, a little pricey. So uh, my plan is to uh, bet Bobby Green. Um, I'm going to put him on uh, on on my parlay. He's got a, a three inch reach advantage versus uh, Jared Gordon, and it's uh, six significant strikes for Bobby Green per minute. And it's 5.3 significant strikes for Jared Gordon. So Jared Gordon, you know, he throws. 
Um, Gordon does throw, you know, some winging, uh, you know, hooks, uh, some overhands, you know, and, and throws, you know, some combinations decent, but you know, his, his winging overhands, he kind of, you know, throws his punch and it's kind of like, it, it's not very controlled. It's not very purposeful and it's not that fast. So, you know, when he does that, windmill he, type punches. yeah, exactly. So, you know, when he comes in like that green, you know, Green is a guy who can time excellent strikers. So when you come in like that, it, it's a recipe for you getting timed. And um, Green does have a good, really good straight right counter. Gordon uh, get uh, Gordon can get Green against the cage. You know, fake some punches and then go for you know some takedowns and then hold him against the cage. Things like that stall. And also, if uh, if Gordon looks pretty good in the first round, you know, just to make Green go from minus 250 to maybe minus 150, that's when I'll, I'll spring into action and get a, a bet on Bobby Green. Um, and, and also, you get to see, you know, is Bobby Green playing around too much? Because, I mean, you know, Bobby Green's one of those guys, my favorite fighter, you know, because he's so fun to watch with the hands down, striking, counterpunching, you know, amazing, you know, head movement and shoulder roll and all this type of stuff. Y you don't know which Green is going to show up. Green fights to to the opponent's talent level. Green can, ha can have a harder time because he might want to put on a show because Gordon is too slow. So then he'll start doing head movement, you know, just start kind of, you know, one twoing here and there, but not really putting enough power on his punches. And people might perceive that Gordon is winning the round because he's going forward. And all of a sudden, Green can turn it into minus 150 and becomes profitable. So that's what I, that's my game plan is wait for Green to uh, you know come down in price and then live bet him and then of course yeah put him on the parlay and and Green by decision uh, small bet on Green by decision. So Green by decision is pretty much our our pick here. So thanks for listening. Like subscribe. Thanks guys. Hey guys, thanks for continuing to watch. Uh, we've been drinking MMA and we are still continuing to break down the uh, fight night, UFC fight night, Blades, Pavlovich. This is the co-main event here. We've got Brad Tavares in the middleweight division taking on Bruno Silva. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to live bet this one. Um, I am going uh, Bruno Silva uh, by decision. Um, Brad Tavares is a seasoned fighter. has been in the UFC since like forever. Um, he knows how to take a punch. Um, Bruno Silva throws those power punches, but I think Brad Tavares can, uh, can either take him or, um, um, block him, whatever. Um, and Brad Tavares is getting to a point where he's not as what he what used to be, but he is a great fighter. So I am going Bruno Silva via decision on this one. Yeah, I mean, I totally, totally get what you're saying. Bruno Silva is a faster fighter. Also, um, you know, Bruno Silva is a southpaw, and uh, Brad Tavares is orthodox. So, you know, just that that with that that lefty changeup, you know, uh, Bruno Silva is a fast starter. Got that fast jab, fast, pretty fast punches, and he likes to really push forward. Um, and Tavares, you know, is, is okay, just kind of backing up, and he doesn't throw that high volume and. You know, Bruno Silva has 4.31 significant strikes per minute, whereas Tavares only has 3.3. They both have less than a takedown, so it's a stand-up fight. Um, like I said, though, um, you know, also Brad Tavares is minus 165. He's the favorite. So, you know, even if I do want to bet Brad Tavares, uh, you know, it, it's like minus 165 in a situation where I think he's going to drop the first round. I uh, just not, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to wait for him to lose the first round or at least – come down in price while Silva pushes forward and lands more punches in the beginning. Uh, and then maybe b bet Brad Tavares. But really, I want to see Bruno Silva slow down. That's when I'm going to spring into action and, and get that bet on Tavares. Um, Tavares, uh, is, uh, he's got good right hand. You know, he knows how to counter with his right hand well. You know, he's got a good leg kick. Um, and he gets better as the fight goes on. And last fight, like I said, I saw Bruno Silva slowing down. Um you know, versus, uh, mere chart and, uh, you know, just, you know, just didn't perform well. And that's why he got, ended up getting, uh, knocked down and then, uh, submitted. So, um, it, it's a wait and see for me, but like I said, you know, Tavares is a guy who I kind of want to bet on, but like I said, um, going to drop the first round. And when you're also, I felt like Tavares right hand, his right counters are good, but his left hand counters, not good. Problem is, is that when you're going, uh, as, as Tavares is an orthodox fighter, normal righty stance, and you're going up against a guy who's a lefty, you don't just get to counter with your right hand now because the guy's a lefty. Now the easier counter, the counter that's going to land is your left. So I just said, you know, Tavares' left just was not clicking in his last fight at all, uh, in my opinion. So 
you know, I just think it's a, it, it's a bad style matchup for Tavares. This is going to be a stand-up fight. It's a stand-up so it's going to be an interesting fight, but maybe a boring fight as well. Yeah. But uh, my my pick is Bruno Silva via decision. Uh, totally. He's so thanks for listening. Fighter. And like, subscribe. Thanks. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, continuing to watch uh, We've Been Drinking MMA. I'm breaking down uh, UFC Fight Night. Blades versus Pavlovich. This is the main event here. It's Pavlovich versus Blades. Um, Sergey Pavlovich, Curtis Blades, heavyweight. Huge fight. Huge fight. Both of them are, are highly ranked. Um, and both of them are contenders. This fight is a possible, you know, title eliminator, it looks like to me. Um, Pavlovich has KO'd everybody, uh, literally. <laughs> I mean, KO'd Derek Lewis, KO'd Tai Tuivasa, you know, uh, KO'd everybody, basically. Um and uh, he's on he's on a five fight win streak. All of them first round KOs. I think he's like ninety percent of his wins uh, are by first round KOs. That's why for me, my prediction is I want to do a, a smallish bet on um, uh, Pavlovich by KO. And if I can find Pavlovich by KO in the first round, all the better. But I want Pavlovich by KO. He's so dangerous with his KO power uh, combinations going forwards and backwards. So Pavlovich by uh, KO for probably it'll be like plus 200 because he's plus 150. So it'll be something. It's good money for for a KO. And then, you know, we'll see about Blades in the after. Um, Pavlovich's power in the first round is incredible. So if you want to go the first round knockout for Pavlov, Pavlovich, is, it's probably the smart money. Be honest with you, the way he's yeah. uh, like steamrolling um, top top talent, you know. Thing is, Pavlovich has a four inch reach advantage over Curtis Blades, which is huge in a, in a in a in a stand up, you know, in in a in a situation where Pavlovich is so dangerous and he's got four inch reach advantage, you know, it just means that he can really push forward and throw those three punch combinations right off the bat and not really feel too, you know. Uh, like he's going to get countered, you know, four inch reach advantage. So yeah, Blades did have a good, nice KO counter win over Chris Dawkins two fights ago. And he showed that, but if he, if he wants to exchange with Pavlovich in the first round with, and he's got a four inch disadvantage, reach disadvantage, it's a situation where Pavlovich will get him out quick, uh, with a, with a, with a combination and, and, uh, you know, uh, finish him on the ground type of thing. So, uh, four inch reach disadvantage for Curtis Blades. Um, you want to talk about significant strikes? Curtis Blades has three point five per minute, and significant strikes for Pavlovich is eight per minute. So I mean, Pavlovich hits hard, and and, and you know, all three of those punches in his punch combination are hard and they're heavy, and, and and it can really do damage. You know, also Pavlovich is a little bit slow with his movement to begin with. I think he's actually a, a, a kind of a, a slow mover, but his punch combinations are fast. So if Blades can figure that out, you know, in the second round or so, and really realize that, he can really just kind of just leg kick, circle, leg kick, circle. Time fake, it. Time it. Time those, time those counters, you know, like, like fake the takedown. Pavlovich might get stunned, leg kick, or punch to the stomach. Things that'll slow Pavlovich down that can let Blades win a, a decision and cruise to a decision uh, with all five rounds. So that's the game plan. Pavlovich uh, uh, KO a bet, a uh, small one, and then see how Pavlovich can deal with play, Blades' um, you know, leg kicks and, and takedown attempts and, and other things like that and, and, and see if Pavlovich's speed can actually... I think Blades is actually a little bit faster on the feet. So I think Blades uh, overall, I like Blades to, to win. But Pavlovich can knock out anybody, especially with a four-inch reach. That's why I'm not going to bet Blades until the second round. So. These two are high-level fighters. So it's <laughs> going to be interesting, just interesting fight. It's going to be a firefight. Like, even though Blades has his wrestling, sometimes he just doesn't want to show it. And he wants to throw. So this is going to be interesting if he does decide to do that. So let's go. So Big heavyweight clash. It's going to be a fun one, guys. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe. Thanks, everybody.